Hello world! I wanted to have a little conversation this afternoon about the new VR Vex world. So I posted in a previous video some very very basic autonomous robot driving around uh, on a video posted just a couple days ago. So I wanted to expand upon that and start talking about what we can do for some decision making process. Now what we saw in the previous one was just a very basic uh, drive around turn, keep on driving turn, keep on driving turn. With this one I've added some blocks for some decision making processes. So what we're doing in the beginning as you see here the very first thing that's going to happen with when started is I'm going to turn to the left. What it does there is once it's turned all the way to the left at that 90 degree point it takes a measurement of how far away the wall is from the robot. So as we know on these virtual robots, and I'll open up the playground here just so we can see this, on these virtualized robots they have a front sensor. That front sensor has a virtualized um, sonar on it so you can utilize that to have an idea of how far away something is. So if you see on that robot the very front piece of it shows a little sonar head. Okay, so what's nice about that is you can interact with that in your program to take measurements of how far away something is. So what it's doing is it's shooting an audio signal out. It's bouncing off something in theory here and returning back to it. And what you can see up here in the top right hand corner where it shows distance on this playground, it shows a continuous reading of what that sonar is supposed to be reading. The sonar is extensively accurate because it's entirely virtual and we're not dealing with actual sensor problems like we do in the real world. So what's nice is when this thing does a sensor reading, it has a down to the millimeter reading of how far away something is. So the very first thing that I do is create a while loop that essentially just continues to read my sensor value and this while loop says while distance in millimeter is less than 500 drive in reverse for 20 millimeter increments once we've gone beyond that 20 or that 500 millimeter point or we equal it then we'll jump out of that while loop and then since we've turned to the left we're turning back to the right 90 degrees and then I start what's called a forever loop. So this is similar to a while true uh, in our Python programming or, or just while one equals one, for example. It's a loop that just goes on forever. And we use that as a continuous autonomous driving code loop so we make sure it happens continuously. The very first statement within this forever loop is if distance in millimeter is greater than 200, drive forward. So if I'm oriented, pointing up in this virtualized world, it's going to continuously drive until that sensor meter sees something that's less than 200 or right at 200. Now it is driving forward in 50 millimeter increments and we can see that right here with this block, drive forward for 50 millimeters. Now once that statement is no longer true, it jumps to our I, this else. Inside of our else, we have multiple different things built in. The very first thing that I did was set a variable of sonar front in millimeters to whatever it's reading. So I'm taking a reading off of the uh, distance measurement sonar that points forward, and I'm setting that to sonar front. And then I'm also setting a variable of object front to 1. So a lot of times I like to do this to help with decision making uh, processes. So I'll just set things to 0 or 1 being yes or no, true or false, on or off. Okay, so since I have sonar front, I just take a measurement and I read that in the sonar front. That's what's how far away the thing is in front of me. And then I take object front. This means since object front equals true because I've stopped, it's seen something within that 200 millimeter point, I switch object front to 1. Now I can make a decision based on my if statements since my object front equals 1. I'm saying if object front equals 1, since we've just set that to be true, we're going to turn to the left at 90 degrees, and then we take a sensor reading from that front sensor. 
Now, since we're dealing with the restrictions of this robot, we don't have the ability to have a pan-tilt sonar system, for example, or have multiple different sonars uh, reading to the left and to the right, forward, back, etc. So what we can use is use the equipment that we have on this virtualized system to take measurements of our surrounding environment. We can do that by pivoting the robot around. So as I mentioned, the first thing here that I do is I turn to the left for 90 degrees. That's straight to the left. Then I take a sensor reading. So I set sonar left. That's a variable that I've established to distance a millimeter. So I take a quick shot of what my sonar sees and I set that to a variable. Then I turn to the right here a full 180 degrees. So if I started at forward and then I turned left at 90 as opposed to turning right at 90 and then right at 90 again to get my right hand view I just turned back to the right at 180. Now what's nice about this virtualized world is it's actually going to turn right at 180 degrees. If we're dealing with the physical world especially if this little four-wheeled robot has rubber wheels we're going to deal with a lot of uh, wheel jumping and a lot of different issues that we're going to have if we try to tell it to turn right unless we're using a gyroscope and a bunch of other stuff. But in this virtualized environment, it's a really nice way to experiment and work on things that's going to be exact. So if I turn it to the right at 180 degrees, it's going to turn exactly in the opposite direction that it's pointed currently since I turned it to the left. So I'm going to take a reading off of what's to my right where I was. And that's where I'm taking my set sonar right to distance in millimeters. So if you can look over on the field, imagine if, I, if my robot is basically straight ahead of where it's at it's going to turn the right and take a measurement and I'll hit play on this so you can see how the robot acts here shortly once I do that I've taken input on what how far away the object is to my left as well as how far away objects are to my right then I'm turning back left for 90 degrees that way I'm back to where I started. I've taken a measurement from my left and I've taken a measurement from my right and I've determined uh, the measurements for both sides and I can make a decision thereafter. Okay, so I'm in my if statement. So now I've determined some things in front of me. I've done sensor readings of my left and my right and I can inject another if inside of this if. So this is where I make a decision. If my sonar left is greater than sonar right, then I can turn to the left for 90 degrees. Else, turn to the right for 90 degrees. So if sonar left equals, or is greater than sonar right, that means uh, whatever I see to my left is farther away than what is to my right, then I will turn to the left. I don't have to have the same if statement the other way around, because if sonar left is less than sonar right, that means I know I should be turning to the right. So that's why I have this else of turn right 90 degrees. So either one of these will be true. One of them will be true. Either sonar left will be greater or sonar right will be greater. This if then else statement will take care of that decision matrix of if I want to turn left or turn right. Then since I'm done with that, I'll exit this if portion. And then I'm going to be getting out of my other if portion. And then I'm jumping all the way back up to my first if here. I'll grab this just so you can see that chunk. So since I've now turned either left or to the right, I can take another sensor reading straight forward. If distance in millimeters is greater than 200, continue to drive forward for 50 millimeter increments. And the whole loop starts all over again, like I had said, in forever. So I have this virtual playground here that we have opened up here, and this is the vr.vex.com. So this is the cool new virtual environment that we can do programming in. This is the blocks programming language. So as long as you have a concept of how to do uh, programming with a drag and drop block environment, you can create things like this. Okay, so let me, uh, I'm just going to refresh this here. We'll start this program. We can see how this op operates here. So the first thing, as I had mentioned, is this system is going to be turning to the left and it's going to be backing up until we hit that 500 millimeter mark okay backing up in 20 millimeter points once I've hit that point I'm turning back to the right and now I'm within my forever loop so I'm driving forward until my distance is no longer going to be hitting that threshold of 200 so once I get up to the top is where it starts making that decision process the first thing is we know in our code it's going to stop and it's going to turn left. Then it turns at 180, turns right. I've now taken 
I'll stop this right here. I've now taken my sensor readings of my left and my right, and I've made a decision all the way down here on this if statement. If sonar left is greater than sonar right, then continue on, make a decision of left or right, depending on what it sees. So it determined, since we can see this visually now, it determined that left is less than right. Therefore, I made the decision to turn to the right and continue on. Now I'm back up to the top of this forever loop, and I'm continuing forward until uh, I hit that 200 millimeter mark. And we'll hit play and watch it continue on. Now I just restarted the program here, so I'm just going to stop this reset since I hit the stop button and then play button is starting all over again. So we'll start that back from the beginning, hit this refresh, and hit play. We can watch it loop all the way around. Okay? So as I hit play here, or start on my function, it's going to do the same thing. Of during to the left, take a measurement reading, continue to back up until I hit that threshold, then I'm going to turn right, then I'm going to continue on. And we'll let that run for a little while so you can see how this operates. Here we are where we're going forward again. It's going to go forward until it hits that threshold of 200 as you see here in the top of our forever loop. Once that happens, as I was talking about just a little bit ago, it's going to stop. It's going to turn object front equals 1. And it's going to make my left and right movements. Here's my left measurement. Turn all the way back to the right measurement. Turn back to center. Decision. Turn right. Move forward. Now we're back to the top of our forever loop. And continuing on again until that 200 point. So what's going to happen is this is going to continue to loop over and over and over again until something stops or something gets in the way. There's a lot of different things that we can do moving beyond this, but this is a pretty basic uh, autonomous type of code with a few little decision pieces in there. So this is where we're starting to build a little bit of autonomy here within our virtualized robot using this VRVex.com platform. So hopefully uh, you were able to learn something from this. Uh, we'll be building on beyond this here in future videos. And one thing I'd like to do is compare this drag and drop block code with actual Python code. So if we take some assumptions in Python, we can make functions that call specific things for doing the same type of uh, operation. So we can have a Raspberry Pi robot, for example, do the same things. But this drag and drop visual code is a really nice way to start off and get an idea of how you want things to operate. So this is Chris with Elevations. Hopefully you learned something. Have a great night.